Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Hogwarts, the most decent white wizard in history. Chapter 1. Cedric Diggory. A big boy full of reason, talent, grace and a sense of justice. He's everything one could hope for in a Hogwarts student. Cedric raised his eyebrows at himself in the mirror. It has been six years since he traveled to the world of Harry Potter. He also received the admission notice to Hogwarts a few days ago and has reached the age to go to school. Although he likes the appearance and quality of this body very much, this is not a good person to be a righteous person. The world of Harry Potter. It is a wizarding world where attack and defense are not proportional. No matter how powerful the magic power is, the body is still that of an ordinary person. No matter how powerful the wizard is, if he is distracted for a moment, he may be killed by the enemy. In the original work, even Cedric, who was powerful and loved by his classmates, could not escape death. He fully embodies the unique qualities of Hufflepuff Academy and is a role model worthy of everyone's learning. He was a kind, loyal friend who believed in fair play, and his death has shocked everyone, whether they knew him or not. Please always remember him, and when you have to choose between the right path and the shortcut, don't forget what happened to an upright, kind, and brave boy. I don't know how many times. He heard it in his dream, Dumbledore praising himself after his death, and then suddenly woke up, sweating profusely. This is too scary. In order to sleep peacefully, he must let the old snake that always wants to be resurrected die completely. This way you can have a good night's sleep. Fortunately, I activated the righteous system. Everything will be different. Cleared his throat. Cedric began to straighten his appearance in the mirror. He has an important meeting today. He hoped that he would perform well in that person's eyes so that he could be qualified to go to Hogwarts in advance. After a while, there was a knock at the door downstairs. Cedric's father stepped forward quickly and quickly opened the door. Standing at the door was a witch wearing square glasses, curly black hair tied into a high bun, and dark green robes. Hello, Mrs. McGonagall, I'm sorry to bother you with such a trip despite your busy schedule. Amos Diggory quickly gave way to the door, and extended an invitation to Professor McGonagall. Hello, Mr. Diggory, Mrs. Diggory. Professor McGonagall nodded. Hogwarts has entered the admission season, and she is now busy visiting muggle families with children with wizarding talents. Fortunately, the other party's letter was sent early. Otherwise she would definitely not have time to make this trip. After coming to the house and taking a seat, she directly took out the letter she received and asked doubtfully. Mr. Diggory, to be honest, although I understand your request, I don't understand what you mean. What do you mean by wishing to check into Hogwarts earlier in order to practice magic? Professor McGonagall's eyes stared at him behind his square glasses. She wanted to confirm whether the other party was playing a trick on her. Amos Diggory waved his hand quickly, as if he was already prepared for this question. I knew you would misunderstand, so I specially invited you to come in person so that I can explain it. It is known. In a family with adult wizards, it is difficult to tell even if a young wizard practices magic, but our family is in a special situation. He glanced upstairs warily. Then he lowered his voice and said, My child is in a special situation, so I hope to be able to move in as soon as possible. Special circumstances. Professor McGonagall immediately thought of Neville. That was another child who almost became the child of prophecy. Because of the attack, his magic talent was very poor. He almost failed to be recognized by Hogwarts admissions magic. No, it's not because of bad talent. Amos Diggory explained awkwardly again. On the contrary, my child's talent is very good, but... He glanced at his wife. After receiving encouragement, he continued to explain to Professor McGonagall, this kid in our family is going crazy. What? Professor McGonagall tilted her head, thinking she had heard wrongly. What the hell kind of adjective is this? Good is good, bad is bad. How can anyone be so good as to be evil? Let's put it that way. Amos spread his hands. Actually, he asked me to write that letter, mainly because he said that it was wrong for him to use magic at home. I didn't say that, father. Everyone looked up following the sound. Cedric walked slowly down the stairs. This is a ministry of magic rule. It is clearly stated in the regulations prohibiting the use of magic by underage wizards that wizards under the age of 17 underage are not allowed to use magic outside of school. 
The first time I use it, I will receive a warning letter from the Ministry of Magic, and the second time I will be expelled. This is the reason why I want to move into Hogwarts early. Of course, this clause is still flawed. Mainly because Trace Silk cannot specifically identify whether the magic was released by an underage wizard. This technology has not been reformed for decades. I will definitely find ways to improve it in the future. Cedric came to Professor McGonagall. Opposite him, the vice principal of Hogwarts, bowed slightly to show courtesy. Very sorry for interrupting you. But since I started to activate my magic power at the age of five, I have been too curious about spells, so I can only apply to you. I hope you can understand how I feel. After doing all this, the system prompt appeared again in Cedric's ear. Science popularization and maintenance of magic regulations will reward 100 experience points. I see. Professor McGonagall nodded. She suddenly understood what it meant to be evil. Glancing at Cedric, who was clean and tidy, Professor McGonagall was very satisfied with his appearance. She likes outstanding students the most. Children who have just entered school. It is extremely rare to have a performance like his. Even though many adult wizards have magic, they still make a mess all over themselves. She composed herself and said. Then, regarding your application for early admission to Hogwarts, I will now make a simple inquiry to you. Professor McGonagall never expected that. The next question and answer will shock her so much. Okay. Cedric nodded. He is full of confidence in the test. Over the years, because of the existence of the system, he has added a lot to himself. And with his mature adult mind. Among children of the same age, it is impossible for anyone to be more self-disciplined than him. Before answering the question, he also quickly opened the panel and added the 100 experience points he just got to the magic value. Name, Cedric, Bloodline, Wizard Bloodline, Magic Power, 32 points not popular. Before 50 points, every 100 experience points can increase by 1 point. Comprehensive value, 15 points. Third rate masters have 80 points, second rate masters have 85 points, first rate masters have 90 points, super masters have 95 points, the big three have 99 points, and god level masters have 100 points. Talent list. The levels from high to low are SSS greater than SS greater than S greater than A greater than B greater than C greater than D greater than E. SS level talent, infectious power. S level talent, casting spells without a wand. A level talents, transfiguration, charms, quidditch, herbs, potions, fighting, white magic defense. B level talents, occlumency, black magic, attack, pet affinity, language. C level talent, prophecy. Note, talents can only be increased with talent points or through self-cultivation. Magic spells, cleaning curse LV3, 28 300s, repairing curse LV2, 149 200s, flying curse LV1, 16 100s. Available experience points, 0 points. Available talent points, 0 points. It can be seen from this panel that Cedric's template is still very powerful, and he has A-level talents in many abilities. The low rating is mainly due to the small number of spells in their low level. You know during the Goblet of Fire period, he was also chosen to represent Hogwarts. In other words, the Goblet of Fire at that time considered him to be the most powerful student in Hogwarts. Of course, Cedric is stronger now than before. All these years of hard work. He increased his magic power from 10 points to 32 points, and also upgraded his wandless spellcasting, which was originally an A-level talent, to S-level. Yes, in addition to adding points, these values can also be increased by practicing yourself. This is because of his young age. The reason why I can only face my parents every day. After entering Hogwarts and facing more people, the efficiency of gaining experience will increase a lot. After all, there are too many things that are in line with the right path. By the way, you just talked about modifying magic. Zongsi's magic is very profound, and it can't be improved casually. Professor McGonagall's expression was serious. She doesn't like little wizards who talk about trains. So her first sentence was to remind Cedric not to be too ambitious. Of course, this will be a long-term goal, and I don't even know whether I will succeed but that still doesn't stop me from setting it as a goal and working hard for it. Cedric shrugged. 
After all, the goal is to be difficult, right? Hear his answer. Professor McGonagall's eyes lit up. Neither humble nor arrogant, clear and logical, with logical thinking that even adults may not have. What a great experience. Of course, this must not be empty talk. Suppress psychological joy. Professor McGonagall continued to ask quietly, so you should like to study spells very much. Can you know your current progress? When asked about this, she noticed that Cedric was visibly nervous. In fact, this is a trap question, because Cedric said before that little wizards are not allowed to use wands outside of school. So if he says he is proficient, then it proves that everything before is just his lie. Feel sorry. Cedric shook his head dejectedly. Because I can't use a wand, I can only practice some simple magic that doesn't require a wand to make up for my own hobby of magic. He raised his hand as he spoke. The suitcase is flying. With the casting of the flying spell, the suitcase originally located in the room on the second floor flew straight up. It flew down the stairs like a swallow returning to the forest, and delivered the handrail into Cedric's hand. Professor McGonagall was surprised and delighted. Surprised. This flying spell is not simple, and it is not even a spell that junior wizard students will learn. And Cedric performed it so skillfully. The suitcase flew downstairs without any collision, which was enough to show that he had truly mastered this spell. What shocked her even more? Professor McGonagall noticed that Cedric did not reach for the wand that was hidden in his clothes. That is to say, he cast spells without a wand. This concept is dozens of times more difficult than the flying curse. There are many wizards who never master this skill in their lifetime. Then, Cedric demonstrated two more spells. Cleaned up and as good as restored. He has become more proficient in these two, and can complete the spell almost in the blink of an eye. Very good, really very good. The stern Professor McGonagall rarely praised a young wizard to his face. However, after seeing his performance, I couldn't help but smile with satisfaction. This kid is really talented. This made her couldn't help but want to know more about him. So, besides modifying the trace silk, do you have any other pursuits? The Diggory couple beside them became nervous instantly. The two of them leaned together, clasping their hands and fingers, looking dryly at their child Cedric with pursed lips and white eyes. Don't say that, certainly. Cedric suddenly stood up. There was light in his eyes, and he shouted loudly. Actually, my first wish is to break the spell on the mysterious man's name so that everyone can call out his name openly. To eliminate the dark wizard, we must start by burying the mysterious man. It turns out to be this. Mr. and Mrs. Diggory closed their eyes with a look of despair. They could only pray silently in their hearts, hoping that Professor Mike would not be frightened by Cedric's remarks. This child actually pointing the sword at the mysterious man. Professor Mike stood up with a huff. Oh my god, how dare you. Professor McGonagall's chest rose and fell rapidly. The Diggory couple, who had already expected this, immediately took action. The lady stepped forward to comfort her, and her husband immediately brought a cup of hot tea with a wave of his magic wand. Mr. Diggory also glared at Cedric and said angrily, didn't I ask you to say something lighthearted first? Didn't I tell Zongsi first? Cedric argued unconvincingly, we should no longer be afraid of the mysterious man. If his name hadn't been spelled by the Death Eaters, I would have made up a song about his failure. Not only do I want to read it, I also want to sing it. If you are afraid of even saying his name, how can you stand in front of him, face him, and destroy him? Cedric waved his little arms. Even the meticulous hairstyle on his head trembled slightly as his body swayed. Professor McGonagall, a former member of the Order of the Phoenix. He also seemed to recall those years when he resisted Voldemort, was passionate and sacrificed his life. Mr. and Mrs. Diggory clasped their fingers again. Here we go again. Here we go again. This guy's magic speech. Every time I heard him say this, I would feel my heart boiling, and then I would be moved by what he said. As a result, there was a commotion at home. Parents are not like parents, and children are not like children. Isn't this really a curse? Feel sorry. Professor Mike took off his eyes and took advantage of the action of wiping the lenses to calm down his mood. After some quick thinking, she made a decision quickly. Very nice attitude. Cedric, I am willing to be your guarantor and let you move into Hogwarts early. Promise Cedric. 
Not just because of his talent, but also because of his ambition. Taking him back to Hogwarts and letting Dumbledore observe him is the safest course of action. After gathering her emotions, Professor McGonagall quickly returned to her usual stern tone. Whenever you're ready, just send me a message. Now you can. Cedric picked up the suitcase in his hand. Although I don't know whether you will agree to my application, I know you are busy, so I will prepare in advance. If I can help you save a little time, that would be great. Also, don't look at me when I'm young. I can already live independently in my daily life. Mr. and Mrs. Diggory held their breath. He was afraid that the sound of his breathing might interfere with Professor McGonagall's judgment. You're very thoughtful. Professor McGonagall couldn't help but praise again. She fell in love with such an outstanding child more and more. If all the young wizards in the future can be like him, then better days for the wizarding world are not far away. However, this matter must also take into account the mood of the other party's parents. She turned her attention to the Diggory couple, if you can rest assured. Absolutely rest assured. Hogwarts is our alma mater, and we absolutely believe in the character and strength of Principal Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall. My child is following you, and I feel relieved. It's the best thing you can agree to. Mr. and Mrs. Diggory were full of praises and witty remarks. In just three seconds, they sang and finished singing the compliments they had planned for a long time. So, although I noticed something strange, but Professor Mike really couldn't find any reason to refuse. She pulled out her wand and tapped it towards the suitcase in Cedric's hand. Wait until the suitcase floats. Professor McGonagall stretched out his hand towards Cedric. Let's go to Hogwarts. This is so cool. Cedric crossed the table and came to the other side, carefully placing his hand into Professor Mike's palm. To him, the beautiful days are finally coming when I can go to Hogwarts. He raised his head and said excitedly towards the tall Professor McGonagall, Professor, I will never forget this day. Finished. He said goodbye to his parents on the other side. Then, father and mother, I will leave first. I will miss you. Well, Mrs. Diggory covered her mouth and turned to lie on her husband's shoulder. Only in this way, she was able to prevent her smile from being seen by Professor McGonagall and Cedric. Help me quickly. Mr. Diggory, who could hardly hold back his words, hurriedly whispered in Madame's ear. To prevent her husband from revealing his secret. Mrs. Diggory pinched a small piece of flesh on her husband's back and twisted it. The sourness came. Mr. Diggory suddenly had tears in his eyes. Go on, kid, your mother and I will take care of ourselves. What a touching family bond. Professor McGonagall made no secret of his envy of the Diggory family. She rubbed her eyes. Don't worry, I will give you a healthier Cedric during the summer vacation. Of course, of course. Mr. Diggory kept nodding his head, but didn't dare to say anything. Then let's go. Professor McGonagall took Cedric and left the house. After walking out of the house, Cedric felt a twisting sensation running down Professor Mike's arm. Then the two of them flashed. Then he appeared in a very quaint wizard town. Cedric noticed that there was a shop called the Three Broomsticks Bar nearby, and he immediately reacted. This is Hogsmeade. Yes, let's walk into Hogwarts next. I will tell you some basic precautions on the way. Okay, Professor McGonagall. Cedric was very excited. After coming to the world of Harry Potter for so many years, I finally arrived at Hogwarts. The better days are finally coming. Mr. and Mrs. Diggory hugged each other and cried with joy. The child finally left home. He can finally stop harming them. Mrs. Diggory took off the hair accessories on her head shook off her elegant and delicate hairstyle, and walked upstairs. I'm going to go back to sleep right now. I will be in trouble with anyone who doesn't let me sleep in from now on. Me too. Mr. Diggory waved his wand. Beer and side dishes all flew to the coffee table on the sofa. I must watch a game of Quidditch on the sofa today. He threw his body into the soft sofa, breathed a long sigh of relief, and raised the bottle high to pay tribute to his son's next stop. Good luck. Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Founded around 990 AD, it is one of the 11 known magic schools in the world and is considered one of the best magic institutions in the wizarding world. Hogwarts is inevitably a little quiet during the summer vacation. But with the arrival of Cedric, this silence was soon broken. Early morning. 
Cedric ran out of the common room, greeting everyone he met along the way. He encountered it first. It was Argus Filch, the administrator. Hello, Mr. Filch, I'm Cedric who checked in early. If you need me to do anything, you can always call me. I know you, I just hope you can abide by the school rules. Filch had bulging eyes like fish bubbles and was holding his cat named Lady Nollies. Of course, I have read Hogwarts, a school history, thoroughly. I will strictly abide by the school rules and I will never let you worry about it. Cedric finished. A system prompt rang in my ears. Declaration, I advocate abiding by school rules and gaining 100 experience points. His smile became more obvious. As long as you can let him gain experience, no matter whether you are a dead eye or not, you are his good friend. Got a reward. There was naturally a bit more sincerity in his smile. Looking at the sunny and cheerful boy Cedric, even the lifeless Filch was stunned. Been at Hogwarts for so long. This was the first time he felt unreserved kindness from the young wizard. Children don't lie. With Filch's terrifying tower keeper appearance, it was almost impossible for the new kids to like him. And after the children were caught by him once or twice, their dislike of him skyrocketed. Over time, he also completely became the opposite of the little wizards. How long has it been since he saw such sincere eyes? Okay then. Filch suddenly felt that under Cedric's pure eyes, he felt a little guilty. It was like a dark creature was suddenly released into the sunlight. It feels like being stung by the sun. It was really wrong of me to talk to him so coldly just now. Filch unconsciously changed his attitude. In the future, if you need anything, just come to me. Not many people are more familiar with the school's affairs than me. Okay, bye, Mr. Filch. Cedric finished his experience points and left. According to his experience, the same person will not gain experience points twice for the same reason in one day. Goodbye. Filch stared blankly at Cedric's back until he disappeared. When turning around to leave, somehow, his steps felt a lot easier. Run around the corner. Cedric suddenly felt a chill approaching. Look up. Isn't this Professor Snape, Hogwarts pure love god of war and double agent? When I read the original novel, I still hated him at first. Only when you learn more about the truth later will you realize how touching his story is. Close your eyes. Snape let out a low drink, and the cold aura accompanying him suddenly expanded outwards. He is a sensitive and delicate person, otherwise he wouldn't be able to work as an undercover agent. The complicated look in Cedric's eyes when he saw him was immediately noticed by him. Sorry, Professor Snape. Cedric quickly adjusted and introduced himself generously. Hello, Professor, I'm Cedric who checked in early. I know you are good at defense against the dark arts, potions, charms, and occlumency. I look forward to getting your advice. Snape glanced silently up and down Cedric. After not noticing any bad feeling, he said very proudly. Then you must not be the kind of fool I often encounter. I feel like I'm not stupid. Besides, I've already studied potions in the first grade. Including thousands of magical herbs and mushrooms. Seeing Cedric's confident look, Snape asked directly, What will be the finished product if Narcissus root powder is added to mugwort infusion? You will get the water of life and death, which is a powerful sleeping pill. Where can I find Bazaar? Some kind of solidity in the cow's stomach. Two questions later, Snape suddenly raised the difficulty level. Tell me the recipe for the healing potion. Two wormwood plants, 10 grams of unicorn tail hair, and 10 grams of white grass. Cedric was calm and collected. Can't use one though. But before coming to Hogwarts, he started to study on his own very early. It can be said that no problem within the third grade could trouble him. Very good. Snape nodded with satisfaction. These two questions are no longer within the scope of thousands of magical herbs and mushrooms but are within the more difficult textbook magic potions and potions. Able to answer in seconds. Obviously the effect of Cedric's self-study is very solid. In this case, his self-report just now contained elements of self-effacement. He was smart but self-effacing. This was a student that Snape liked very much. You can come to me if you have any questions in the future, but remember, don't ask me stupid questions. Congratulations on passing Professor Snape's test and gaining 1000 experience points. Sure enough, the key person has a lot of experience. 
The reward was actually ten times that of others, and Cedric suddenly felt happy. Question this time. It's almost half as much as what I used to paint during those years at home. There was no reward triggered at Professor McGonagall's place before, probably because I had applied for early check-in. But now it is purely students asking teachers for advice. This is what students should do. Only behaviors that are not mixed with other interests or purposes can trigger rewards. Cedric seems to understand how the system works better. Coupled with the bumper harvest he had just obtained, his mood suddenly became a little better. Cedric patted his chest confidently. Don't worry, Professor Snape, I will make you proud. Confidence is pretty good. Snape felt like he was hit by a warm smile, something he had never felt before when he was a student. The corners of his mouth also curved unconsciously. Although this did not change the essence of his cold ancient well aura, it seemed like sunlight was shining into the well at this moment. Although it did not dispel the cold. After all, it brought more light and became different. Just one day, all the professors at Hogwarts know that there is a sunny and cheerful boy named Cedric in the castle. Dumbledore was quickly alerted. Ha ha ha, you did a great job, Cedric. This thing called boxing is really good for exercising, and it looks very exciting. Hagrid's hearty laughter surrounded the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Of course, I have been training for a long time, and this thing can improve my reaction ability. A duel between wizards is very about reaction speed. Cedric quickly swayed his body from side to side, and punched left and right hooks quickly. Every punch hit the target Hagrid made for him. At the same time, this kind of practice can even help me subdue enemies that are close at hand when I lose my wand. At the same time, in the principal's office, Professors Dumbledore and McGonagall were also in the crystal ball, observing Cedric chatting with Hagrid. A long time. Only then did Dumbledore look away, put his hands together on the table, tilted his head and praised. What a novel theory. He looked at the human-shaped target that was being swayed left and right by Cedric, and his eyes slightly narrowed behind his crescent-shaped glasses. I feel like I can't withstand such a punch. Yes, he always has some very special ideas. Although Professor McGonagall has been running outside these days. But she would basically go back to Hogwarts in the evening, have dinner with Cedric, and chat. Two days down, many of the other party's remarks made her think deeply and fearfully. For example, how to reform the Ministry of Magic so that it can truly become an organization that serves the wizarding people. Such as establishing shared values. I hope wizards can abide by principles such as freedom and equality. All in all, while Professor McGonagall felt happy, he also couldn't help but feel deeply worried. Such an ambitious goal, will it completely crush the little wizard? You must know that many times, once disappointment accumulates too much, people will easily start to go to extremes. And each of Cedric's goals is terrifyingly grand. Principal, I'm actually worried about him. Professor McGonagall expressed his concerns. Dumbledore was silent for a long time, and then slowly said. Guide the little wizard correctly, this is exactly what we should do. Filch, Hagrid, Snape, and even Minerva yourself all recognized this sunny and cheerful boy in just two days. Such a situation reminds me of a certain close friend. Professor McGonagall was shocked. Even his usual serious face could not be maintained. You mean, Grindelwald. This is a being far more terrifying than Voldemort. Grindelwald's most powerful ability, apart from his magical attainments comparable to Dumbledore's. There is also a strong charisma. He once used his sharp tongue to deceive all the prisoners in America's magic prison. Even, he also instigated the rebellion of Oro Abernethy and the sheep-eating beast Antonio to help him escape from prison. At Perlachay's cemetery, Grindelwald even used a speech to easily persuade hundreds of wizards to agree with his ideas, including many Oros who were originally hunting him. Such as Queenie Goldstein, Credence Barebone. These people had severely opposed him before. Is this analogy too exaggerated? In Professor McGonagall's mind, Cedric cannot be compared with Grindelwald in any case. Indeed, this metaphor is a bit extreme. Dumbledore also had to admit that such an accusation was too harsh but it's not his fault. His life is like walking on thin ice. His best friend Grindelwald and his beloved disciple Tom have all become disasters in this world. Tom will end with Harry, its fate. 
However, we also need to take precautions and make sure there is no second Grindelwald. The office fell silent for a moment. Dumbledore didn't trance for long, he quickly came out of his memories. However, we can also observe him from many angles. Dumbledore picked up the quill on the table, quickly wrote a letter, and woke up Fox who was standing on the shelf next to him. Give it to Mr. Ollivander for me, I have something to ask him. McGonagall understands. Dumbledore must have wanted to consult Cedric's wand. The wand chooses the wizard. Basically, the wand held by a wizard can reflect the wizard's true intentions. And one more thing. After Dumbledore sent the letter, he turned his attention to Professor McGonagall. I hope you can teach him the Patronus charm. I see. Professor McGonagall nodded. The Patronus charm is also a magic that can test the wizard's character. Magic is a wonderful existence. Each wizard has his own preferred magic, and the distinction between black and white wizards comes from this. For example, the blue-black flames created by Grindelwald can ignite the European continent, but they may not turn into dewy roses. This is also one of the magic that proves the true nature of the wizard. Of course, this is not ironclad proof. For example, Grindelwald's patron saint is the phoenix. But it can still be used for reference. Because this goes straight to the wizard's true heart. Snape's Patronus was a doe-like lily for the first half of his life, and later turned into a doe when he was protecting Harry. Soon, the letter Dumbledore sent was answered. He handed the envelope to McGonagall, who opened it and began to read the reply. Good day, great Mr. Dumbledore. I remember the Cedric you asked about very clearly. He was a child with special qualities. His arrival seemed to warm my heart. As for his wand, that's a very ancient wand. Because there are souls from other worlds. Cedric's wand in this life is also different from his previous life. The overall material remains basically unchanged. What has changed is the length of the wand, and the material used for the core. His wand is 14 and 1 half inches long, ash, with a core of unicorn tail hair. But this tail hair is very special. Professor McGonagall continued. When my father was collecting tail hair, he didn't immediately notice that this unicorn was already the mother of three children. It's hard enough for a unicorn to get pregnant. This hair is taken from the tail hair of a unicorn mother who had three babies, and the energy contained in it is huge. So my father had to increase the size of the wand to be able to accommodate the tail hair. However, it was precisely because it was too powerful that no wizard could get its recognition for a long time. Until Cedric arrives, I believe he will be a great white wizard. Sincerely, Ollivander, I salute you. McGonagall returned the envelope to Dumbledore. After Dumbledore scanned it again, his expression softened a lot. Ash is a tree that symbolizes knowledge, purity and truth, and is said to repel venomous snakes and heal snake bites. The wand is made of ash wood and has a very stubborn character. They will always stick to their true master. If they are given to others, they will lose some of their power and skills. It's even called a unicorn tree. It is a material that is very suitable for unicorn tail hair. Especially this wand, one large and three small ones contain magic power. Overall, this and the wand can basically represent that Cedric is an extremely pure, innocent and powerful wizard. What a wonderful son of the powerful white wizard. Dumbledore sighed, but didn't pay much attention. After all, he has seen many good seedlings. Most of them ended up being forgotten by everyone, unable to make any real reforms to the magic world, and the same was true for Cedric. So, we have to teach him well. This doesn't leave as much time. Two more years. Harry is coming back. In Dumbledore's eyes, Harry's importance was unmatched by anyone else. Because he was the only option to end Voldemort. No one can replace it. At that time, we need to spend all our energy on training Harry and fighting Voldemort, especially the latter. Cedric is not the decisive factor. I see. Professor McGonagall left the principal's office. When passing by the corridor, she stopped by the window and once again cast her gaze at the two people having a heated discussion outside Hagrid's cabin. Maybe he was smiling too much. Hagrid, who was more than three meters tall, leaned back and fell from the rocking chair. Cedric stood up immediately. He pulled Hagrid up from the ground, and then cleaned up all the stains on Hagrid's body. See his powerful magic. Hagrid was shocked. He raised his big hand in surprise and high-fived Cedric. This was the warmest and kindest child McGonagall had ever seen. 
She could not imagine how sad she would be if such a child who could bring people happiness one day turned into the third big devil. Cedric, I will teach you well. Even if it's only two years. Cedric looked up thoughtfully. But he didn't see anything except the tall Hogwarts. What's wrong? Hagrid asked, sitting back in the rocking chair. It's okay, it's just time for magic practice. Cedric took out the standard spell, elementary, he brought from his backpack, written by Miranda Gorshik. Sixteen common spells included. Fire-making curse, levitating curse, leg-locking curse, repairing curse, softening curse, cutting curse, unlocking curse, dance curse, swelling curse, freezing curse, universal breaking curse, forgetting curse, tickling curse, flying curse, expulsion curse, existence curse. But not all must be learned. Each grade only needs to learn four, and the difficulty gradually increases. The design is very considerate. Cedric also decided to start learning the most basic spells. This was his main purpose for checking into Hogwarts early. He compressed the six hours of boxing training every day to two hours just to leave time to practice the magic spell. Can you do me a favor? Cedric handed the book to Hagrid, can you read the pronunciation for me? There are some rhythms that I don't quite understand yet. Me, is it me? Hagrid's huge body suddenly became tense. His big plate-like hands rubbed his pants vigorously, and then he carefully held the standard spell, elementary, in his palm. Staring at the long lost book. He looked extremely cautious. I once studied here, and this is a very rigorous course. Yes, that's why I asked you to teach me the correct pronunciation. Cedric blinked at Hagrid. The magic spell is very weird, not only does it need to be matched with gestures, but it even has a weird accent. Of course, the more skilled you are, the more you can omit it. Voldemort was going to start causing trouble in two years, and Cedric made a plan for himself of establishing a foothold in two years and crushing him in five years. Right at that event, completely wipe out that old snake's conspiracy. First step, that is to learn all the basic magic in the first year. Other subjects. It is necessary to complete the content that the first year students originally studied within three months. There is only leapfrog learning. Only then can he attract the attention of the professors and let them teach him more advanced magic in advance. As for those wrote memorization content. He started self-study a year ago and has already recited it by heart. Can I? Hagrid became more and more reserved. He had never thought that someone would ask him to teach magic, but the first grade spells were indeed very simple. Isn't this bad? Hagrid is still scared, although he was very happy living in Hogwarts over the years. In fact, he didn't have a single real friend. It wasn't until Cedric's arrival that he felt like he had a good friend who he could talk to about everything. This made up for his missing childhood. But a shadow always hangs over Hagrid. Now he doesn't even dare to call Cedric his friend, for fear that the other party will think he is weird. After all, the age difference between the two is too big. Of course, we are friends. Cedric stood on tiptoe and whispered in Hagrid's ear. You teach me now, and when I get to a higher grade, I will teach you in turn. Ding, Hagrid was moved to success. Cedric didn't have time to check the reward. Hagrid over there sobbed, and actually covered his face and started sobbing. Woo, you are such a good man, Cedric, and you want to be my friend. I thought that with such a big age difference between us and I was just a gamekeeper, you would look down on me, woohoo. Hagrid pulled out his handkerchief. The sound of blowing your nose is like blowing a trumpet. Of course, we have been friends forever. It is a friendship that can transcend the age gap. Cedric comforted him hurriedly. This is still a child. He feels that he and Hagrid are the complete opposite. Although he has the appearance of a child, he already has the firm mind of an adult. Hagrid is tall though, but in fact, he is very gentle and sensitive at heart. Even though he was covering his face with his right hand and crying, his left hand still held Cedric's standard spell, elementary, firmly in the palm of his hand without moving at all. A child with a sensitive heart. You will always consider the other person's feelings more, and the sadness will go away as quickly as it comes. A word from Cedric. Immediately, Hagrid's tall voice began to tremble again. Woo, ha, ha ha ha. Friendship transcends age, I like this sentence so much. Hagrid laughed for a while, completely relieved. He quickly wiped his palms clean, then leaned down and solemnly stretched out his little finger. 
Then we have an agreement, my friend. Good friend. Cedric and Hagrid finished pulling the hook, and then officially started learning. Well, first, the ignition spell. Hagrid's voice is still so loud. It was so loud that even if you were standing at the gate of Hogwarts, you could still faintly hear his voice. There was a figure just leaning against the door. He stared at the two of them blankly for a long, long time. The other sighed. Faced with these elementary spells, Cedric learned very quickly. Just two hours in the morning and four hours in the afternoon. He has successfully added two spells to his spell list. Fire making spell LV1, 40 one hundredths. Floating spell LV1, 35 one hundredths. Hagrid not only taught earnestly, but also thoughtfully prepared five fires. Every time Cedric lit one, he could move to the next one to continue practicing. And he was bent over. He took the trouble to extinguish the fires he lit one by one so that he could maintain the practice speed more quickly. This moved Cedric very much. Night falls. Cedric bid farewell to Hagrid. Thank you very much, my friend, but I need to dine with Professor McGonagall tonight. I'll come again tomorrow. I'll bring you a classic delicacy from my hometown. As a fan of the original novel, he learned the ropes of the kitchen early on. Thanks to Hagrid. He decided to ask the house elves to prepare an oriental dish to reward Hagrid tomorrow. See you tomorrow, my friend. There is still a month left for summer vacation. I'm looking forward to your hometown delicacies. Hagrid reluctantly bid farewell to Cedric. He watched him leave until the other party entered the castle, and then he took Yaya to start patrolling the forest every day. Cedric also opened the spell book on his way back. By looking at the book, he opened the task template card prompted by the system. Template card, Rubius Hagrid. Talent, half giant bloodline, magic resistance increased to 30, strength increased to 3, constitution increased to 2, lifespan increased by 100 years, appearance does not undergo additional changes. Explanation, the average strength, agility, constitution, and magic resistance attributes of an ordinary adult male wizard are all one. Life wish list. The first item, pass the OWL. Ordinary wizard level examination and become a qualified wizard. Completing this wish list will increase the bonus of this template card by 50%. Item 2, get married. Completing this wish list will prevent this template card from occupying the slot of the template card. Note, the template card slot is initially 1 and can be increased to 2 at most. Your template card slot has been opened. Cedric cheered in his heart. This template card is so powerful. The improvement in magic resistance at least greatly increases the probability of surviving a sneak attack. Increase in strength and fitness. It can give him a physical fitness comparable to that of a monster. With a punch of three points of strength, not to mention knocking you unconscious, the sequelae will be felt. With two points of constitution, even ordinary blows can't knock him down. This is a comprehensive improvement of physical fitness, including resistance to toxins and drugs. In fact, it can also improve magic resistance and so on. Not to mention it has a lifespan of 100 years. This is an ability that many people dream of. As long as the wizard profession is strong enough, it can become stronger with age. Just look at Dumbledore. This new feature of the system is simply too powerful. It seems like this. Several professors in the school, and even Dumbledore, were all mobile treasure troves. And just complete their bucket list. Not only can bonuses be enhanced, but the number of template card slots can even be ignored. Don't say anything else. If he took down the templates of all the professors at Hogwarts, his data would definitely be incredible. Install seven or eight template cards, and you should salute Merlin, the god of Dharma, when he comes. It's so exciting. But everyone's life aspirations are not simple. Both of Hagrid's difficulties are very high. After passing the OWL, Ordinary Wizarding Level Examination, you must first learn this knowledge yourself before you can teach him. Secondly, Hagrid's learning ability is also very poor. I don't know how long it will take him to pass the exam. The second one is even harder. Originally, in the Goblet of Fire plot, Hagrid met his true love, Madame Maxime. But they didn't end up together. They once danced together at the Yule Ball, but they quarreled over the words, half giant. Although they reconciled later when they went to persuade the giant together. But in the end Hagrid ended up living in his cabin. 
It means they have other problems. This is really a headache. Cedric shut down the system and put away his books, but was startled by the figure in front of him. Meow. Norris was frightened. It jumped out of Filch's arms and ran towards the interior of the castle. However, Filch did not move, but apologized to Cedric with a hint of envy. I saw you coming back from Hagrid, but what seems to be bothering you? Trouble. Cedric knows. The expression on my face when I was checking my wish list just now was all seen by the other party. It seems that the other party has been watching here for a long time. Could it be that he was waiting for me specifically? Looking at Filch trying hard to smile, Cedric suddenly understood. It seemed that my equal treatment of him in the past few days had played a big role. Think back again to the reward that moved Hagrid. Cedric quickly changed what he originally wanted to say. Yes, I did encounter a little problem. Let's walk as we go, Mr. Filch. Okay. The two walked side by side towards the Great Hall of Hogwarts. We had a lot of fun practicing magic, but before we left, I encountered a few bad things. Really? Tell me. The first one is Peeves. I originally wanted to ask Hagrid if there is any magic that can limit it. Unfortunately, he doesn't know. Cedric said with great regret. I see it being naughty all day long. It must have caused a lot of trouble for you, Mr. Filch, right? Without waiting for Filch to answer, Cedric continued. I will study hard in the future. When the time comes, I must find the magic spell to restrain Peeves so that he will never dare to cause trouble to you again. Oh, that's it. Filch's voice was a little weak. After listening to Cedric's words, a warmth rolled back and forth in his chest. Just like an iron, he spent the afternoon leaning against the door, looking at the dark side of Hagrid and Cedric having so much fun with each other. The dark side he had felt was smoothed over, and he no longer felt any grievance or envy. A smile suddenly appeared on his face. I didn't expect you to still be thinking about me. Of course, we are friends. Cedric then said another important point. Then I also heard that there are actually squibs in this world. Filch stiffened. Everyone stopped in place, leaving Cedric alone to move forward. But Cedric didn't seem to see it. I will definitely research the corresponding magic potion in the future to solve their problems, but it's a pity that I don't know such friends. When it is developed, I don't know who to try it with. What a worry. There are too many unfair things in this world. Filch froze on the spot. It wasn't until he heard the words, it's too difficult and too unfair, that he suddenly came back to his senses. He hurried after Cedric. He suppressed the expression on his face and said calmly with a trembling voice. If you really need it, I, I have a friend. Real. Cedric stopped suddenly. That's great, thank you Mr. Filch. Filch waved his hand quickly. This, this is nothing, I'm just introducing you and. In. No, I want to thank you for believing in me. Cedric said quickly. I, a little wizard who hasn't even started first grade, have already said a lot of big things without shame, but you are all willing to believe me. Thank you so much. Yuan, is this the reason? Filch felt extremely weird. Yeah, why do I believe him so much? His steps paused again. Filch, who was half a step behind, stared at the back of Cedric, who was unwavering and striding forward, feeling a little lost. I really can't understand it. Although the sunny aura of the other party that attracts him has not changed. But why would I trust him unconditionally? There is always a strange understanding in psychology that he will definitely do what he says. Is this a curse? Filch shook his head. What were you thinking? How could a little wizard who hadn't entered school yet be able to cast a spell that affected other people's minds? Although I emphasized it to myself again. Cedric is just a young wizard who has not yet begun to learn. But when the words come out. But his appearance completely changed. I believe in you. I believe you will one day overcome the problems of this century. Squib. It is indeed not an exaggeration to call it the problem of the century. Then let's make an agreement, take down Peeves first, and then take down the squib. Cedric stood on the stairs and turned around, reaching out his hand to say goodbye to Filch with a serious look on his face. This time in the past, he would continue up to Professor McGonagall's office for meals. And Filch will also go back to his room. Well, see you tomorrow, Mr. Filch. I hope to see you every day, Cedric. Filch solemnly held Cedric's hand. Ding, I moved Filch successfully. 
You get bonus talent points plus one, filch character template card. Sure enough, it's done. Knowing the plot of the original work, it's really easy to handle them. But don't worry. I will study carefully how to deal with peeves and the squibs, so I won't be cheating you. After thinking about it in your mind, Ling Yun returned to Professor McGonagall's room. He soon discovered that Professor McGonagall seemed to be unable to speak tonight. I heard you've adapted well recently. Professor McGonagall finally spoke. Yes, I met Professor Snape. Mr. Hagrid, and Mr. Filch. They are all very kind. Cedric's words once again made McGonagall sigh. If these three people were all amiable, then Peeves would be considered enthusiastic. As long as you adapt well. I haven't been so busy recently. If there is anything you want to learn, I can spare some time. Such a great opportunity. Of course Cedric wouldn't miss it. He raised his hand and let Emery Switch's Elementary Transformation Guide fly into his hand. He touched the simple cover of this book with great interest. I know this spell is difficult, so I just watched it, but I haven't started practicing it yet. Professor McGonagall noticed something else. You are getting better and better at the flying spell. Haha, ha, maybe. In fact, Cedric hasn't been practicing the flying curse much recently. However, after getting Snape's 1000 experience points, his magic power has been increased from 32 points to 42 points. An increase of nearly one-third. The higher his magic power, the easier he becomes at casting various spells. This kind of numerical value that can comprehensively improve his strength is his top priority now. He plans to increase it to 50 points first. 50 points will definitely be a key node, and there should be some magical changes. Cedric is looking forward to it. It is true that the transformation spell must be done step by step. You must not directly transform into a person. However, there is another spell that is also very interesting. Are you interested? Professor McGonagall naturally introduced the Patronus Charm. Patronus Charm. Cedric heard this spell and immediately realized that this might be Dumbledore's test. After all, the Patronus Charm can directly reflect the heart. It seemed that he had to gain Snape's favor as soon as possible and learn his signature Occlumency. But on his face, he was naturally very happy. This is also an advanced spell, right? I'm happy to learn it. It's not entirely a lie. This spell is very useful against dark creatures, and is almost half of its signature skill. And the patron saint has many magical functions. Even more coincidental, Filch's template just now really added this. Template card, Argus Filch. Talent, Beloved Lawless Pet Affinity Talent Upgraded to A Level. Life Wish List Number 1. Become a True Wizard By completing this wish list, you can upgrade your pet affinity talent to S level. Item 2. Be Respected by Students Completing this wish list will prevent this template card from occupying the slot of the template card. Filch's wish list really made Cedric change his mind a little bit. He thought, Filch would have at least one wish list, which would be to torture students who made mistakes again. After all, he's at his most abhorrent. It was the bad attitude towards the students when Pink Toad was the principal. But it seems like this. Is he carrying out torture just to increase his deterrence in the minds of young wizards? No wonder. As a squib, it was Dumbledore's mercy to have a job in the wizarding world. Face the naughty little wizards. But he didn't have any magic to counter the opponent. So he hopes that the little wizards will be afraid of him fear him, which will also make it easier for him to carry out his work better. Naughty children in any country are a disaster. At least after the Battle of Hogwarts. While the students were all celebrating their victory, Filch was still holding a broom and silently cleaning Hogwarts, which was already in ruins. To some extent, this job has even exceeded his life. It has become the only value of his existence. Cedric reflected after reading the template card. Perhaps it was because I respected his work that I was able to gain his recognition so quickly. What a wonderful world, comma, when shall we start? Come to your senses, Cedric immediately confirmed to Professor McGonagall. Maybe some people don't know. Professor McGonagall is actually a master at this. In Deathly Hallows, she once summoned three silver cats to inform the other three deans that Harry Potter was back. Can split the patron saint into three. The strength is evident. Okay, then starting from tomorrow, I will teach you for an hour every night. This is great. 
Cedric excitedly pulled out his schedule booklet. His daily itinerary is recorded here. Two hours of boxing training in the morning, two hours of spell training, an hour's lunch break, one afternoon of spell training, one hour of review time, and two hours of reading time. Cedric first used the quill to copy the previous schedule exactly on a new page. Then gently brush the card with your hand. The ink on the card swam away like a tadpole and was quickly reorganized. A new schedule appears. Reading time in the evening was reduced by one hour and turned into learning spells with Professor McGonagall. Did you decide this for yourself? Professor McGonagall took the pamphlet curiously. There are dates below each itinerary. For example, the previous page says, August 1st to August 2nd, 1989, which means that Ling Yun followed the previous schedule for the first two days. She looked forward. To her surprise, she discovered that there was more to this booklet than she had imagined. 11 years old, 10 years old, 9 years old. Saw it when I was 5 years old. Professor McGonagall could no longer contain his surprise and exclaimed, You have been arranging your own schedule since you were 5 years old. So much yelling. For her who has always been strict, this is already a very rude behavior. You can see the shock in her heart at this moment. This is nothing, I'm just a little precocious. Cedric scratched his head. He glanced at the booklet, hoping Professor McGonagall would not turn to the last page. I'm just afraid of scaring her. But apparently his eyes reminded her. Professor McGonagall flipped open the last page and saw the following words. Make it your mission to destroy Voldemort. Oh my god. She couldn't help but raise her palms to cover her mouth that suddenly grew in surprise. Sorry, I was young and frivolous. Cedric apologized to the shocked Professor McGonagall. At that time, I didn't know the spell cast on those three words. Otherwise, I would have written the words, mysterious man. I don't know if any Death Eaters nearby would notice it at that time. His brows furrowed. This matter has indeed become a knot in his mind. Because if there were any Death Eaters nearby at the time, they might have discovered that Voldemort was being talked about in their home. This may become a hidden danger. What, are you apologizing for this? Professor McGonagall was stunned again, as motionless as if he was petrified. She thought, Cedric will apologize for his arrogance when he was five years old. After all who would dare to imagine? How dare a five-year-old child regard the great demon king, who has made the entire magic world fearful, as his lifelong wish? And look at this schedule. He not only established a goal, but also continued to move toward it with determination. A tick on every page of the schedule. They are all great testaments to his strong will. Is there anything else I haven't noticed, Professor? Cedric tilted his head slightly. He looked at Professor McGonagall with questioning eyes, fearing that he had made some mistakes. Shouldn't I keep these three words? No, no, everything is wrong, kid. Professor McGonagall stood up. She came to Cedric and hugged him emotionally. You're better than I thought. Really, you don't have to be like this. Professor McGonagall remained silent. That is, this world already has a destined child. To her, Cedric is heading towards an impossible goal. His bravery, strength and self-discipline moved her. But this is fate. It's that cruel, but unchangeable fate. It's something you can't fight. A deep feeling of guilt, a kind of apology that I know you won't succeed, but I can't express it to you. All this eventually transformed into a heart full of love in her heart. Professor McGonagall held Cedric tightly in his arms. Child, come to Gryffindor, I will teach you well. Ding, I'm touched by Professor McGonagall's success. You get bonus talent points plus one, Professor McGonagall character template card. Oh my god, how was Professor McGonagall so moved by himself? Cedric also thought that professors like Snape and Professor McGonagall were strong-willed. It will be very difficult to impress. Unexpectedly, it turned out to be easier than Filch. Without even saying anything against his will, Professor McGonagall had completed his self-guided strategy. Cedric, who was held in his arms, immediately turned on the system. Template card, Minerva McGonagall. Talents, transformation, this talent can be upgraded to S level, Quidditch, this talent can be upgraded to a level, first rate master wizard, magic plus 5 points, upper limit 90 points. Life wish list, item 1, brave and righteous Cedric, please be an outstanding student who satisfies her. 
By completing this wish list, you can upgrade your Quidditch talent to S level. The second item, protect Hogwarts before Voldemort died, the number of little wizards in Hogwarts died was less than 5. By completing this wish list, you can upgrade your transformation talent to SS level. Item 3, protect Harry. Before Voldemort dies, protect Harry and prevent him from getting into trouble. Completing this wish list will prevent this template card from occupying the slot of the template card. This difficulty, it's simply improved across the board. Apart from the fact that I still hope to fulfill the first wish, the next two are long and difficult. First up is the Little Wizard of Death. 50 people died in the Battle of Hogwarts. To fulfill this wish, it seemed that the Battle of Hogwarts needed to undergo a big change. Protecting Harry seemed easy. But the condition is that before Voldemort dies, this time span will be difficult. It is a life wish that cannot be fulfilled in advance. However, even if he only completed the first item, it would at least give him 2s level talents and increase his magic power by 5 points, which is still a great harvest. It seems that there are special requirements for increasing the magic power by more than 50 points. But what concerns Cedric the most? It's still Professor McGonagall's first wish in life. In fact, both the second and third items are understandable. They are all things that can be judged in the original work. But the first item, is it actually related to myself? This shows that the character's life wish list can actually be changed. As long as you are important enough in the other person's heart, then a life wish list related to you will appear. This is a sign. The wish list of the character template card can be changed. If I become more and more valued by the other party, will those two tasks that are basically impossible to complete in advance also change? Whether it's for rewards or experiments. Cedric knows it all. How should the talent points obtained in the past few days increase? Talent points minus 3. A level to S level consumes 1 point, S level to SS level consumes 2 points. A level talent transformation, rising to SS level talent transformation, awakening title, natural animagus, turning on the title system, gaining legendary plus one. Ding, it's due to changes in the protagonist's attributes. Minerva McGonagall's magic card value changes, life wish list 2, the reward is increased from the transformation talent to SS level, change 2, the transformation talent is increased to SSS level. Go ahead, this is really lucky. Go ahead, this is really lucky. Can the rewards be upgraded? The reward for transformation was directly upgraded from SS level to SSS level. Cedric was originally worried that some of the rewards would be useless as his strength increased. No need to be afraid now. Therefore, when upgrading talents in the future, it will be fine as long as you do not directly upgrade to SSS level. The last level requires 3 talent points, and it is most appropriate to use the bonus of template cards to upgrade. There are also legendary values. This value is very useful. First of all, the higher your legend value is, the higher your prestige will be. It's the legendary momentum. Secondly, legendary values can replace any upgrade conditions. For example, you can directly upgrade a level 1 magic spell, whether it is LV1 to LV2, or LV10 to Zochen. So is talent. From SS level to SSS level, just consume one point of legendary value. Even template card slots work. Of course, the consumed legendary value will not affect the momentum, because it is determined based on the upper limit. At last, every point of legendary value you don't use can increase the power of all your magic by 10%. This is calculated based on the actual legendary value. 10 points can double the magic power. Such comprehensive values. Cedric doesn't plan to use it right now. The world is changing so fast. He sighed in his heart. I didn't expect that just a hug from Professor McGonagall would cause such a big change in my face. He knew it too. There is a place for him in Professor McGonagall's heart. Although not as good as Harry for now. But as long as you persevere, you will one day be able to achieve transcendence. Transcendence is not the goal, but the reward is truly real. But I don't want to go to Gryffindor. Cedric left Professor McGonagall's arms and shook his head rejecting her offer. First, he has his own ideas and arrangements. Secondly, he believed that Professor McGonagall would never be angry because he rejected her kindness. Really, Professor McGonagall was not angry and even apologized to him. Oh, 
I'm sorry, kid, I should respect your thoughts. Please forgive me. I just like you so much and hope to teach you more and witness your growth. This is definitely a wonderful experience. Cedric believed her completely. Each of the professors at Hogwarts is basically above the average level of teachers. They teach carefully and are very talented. They are the greatest treasure Cedric can find here. Sorry professor, what I really want to go to is Hufflepuff. Cedric does not follow its predecessor without any thought. But the decision was made after careful consideration. Gryffindor trains warriors and requires students to be brave and fearless. Slantlin cultivates ambitious people and requires students to be of good origin and have pure blood. Ravenclaw cultivates top academics and only recruits students who are smart and have extraordinary intelligence. Only Hufflepuff has no requirements for students, you just need to be a good person. Professor McGonagall blinked. She vaguely knew what Cedric wanted to say, but she didn't expect that the next words would be so shocking to her life. But I prefer Hufflepuff, Cedric said firmly. Rather than taking first place, they care more about the feelings of the people around them. They help the weak and will not treat you differently because of your status. Always. In the face of intelligence, bravery, and ambition, the value of kindness is far underestimated. The world is not short of people who want to succeed. But there is an urgent need for people who can lend a helping hand to sad friends, people who can create joy, and people who can mend the world. Maybe they can't do anything earth-shattering. But it is they who constitute the many details in this world that are so ordinary that they can almost be ignored, but are essential. Kindness, loyalty, and gratitude. Professor, I want to be a good person worthy of everyone's trust. This is definitely a cool choice. For love, dare to take risks and ride the wind and waves. Badger Yard is where my life belongs. Cedric blinked and said mischievously, also, who made me like cooking so much? Poof. The emotion in my heart instantly turned into a smile on my face. Professor McGonagall immediately realized that this was Cedric's hope that he would not take this matter too seriously. Be able to consider other people's emotions at this time. He is indeed a natural-born Hufflepuff. He is able to see his own mind clearly and work hard so far. This alone is better than countless people. Tears blurred Professor McGonagall's vision. If the person standing in front of her at this moment was a middle-aged man who had experienced many vicissitudes of life, then she would congratulate him for finally living a clear life. But faced with Cedric as a child, Professor McGonagall only felt endless distress in her heart, because Voldemort was the one who should bear the suffering. Cedric doesn't deserve this. She hugged Cedric into her arms again and hugged him with all her strength. Child, loyalty and kindness are extraordinary bravery. I sincerely wish you the best. And congratulations again in advance for becoming a member of the friendliest, most genuine, and toughest Hufflepuff Academy. Professor McGonagall felt his body tremble slightly. Cedric felt a little apologetic. He didn't want to make the other party feel so uncomfortable. Reminds me of Professor McGonagall's first wish list. Cedric raised his head and changed the subject. Actually, I think I have some talent in transformation. Can I ask you about my ability to transform? Of course, kid. Professor McGonagall turned his head and quietly wiped away the tears from his eyes. She looked back. Putting his hands on Cedric's shoulders, he promised him, any time, no matter what problems you have, you can come to me, do you understand? Thanks. Cedric didn't want Professor McGonagall to wallow in pain any longer. In addition, due to the improvement of his talent, a lot of knowledge about transformation has poured into his mind. Now his hands are itchy and he really wants to try the transformation spell. Professor, please teach me the transformation spell. Certainly. Professor McGonagall finally calmed down. She looked around the table, then cast a flying spell with her wand, holding a box of matches in her hand. Take out one of the black-headed matches and place it on the table. Professor McGonagall first demonstrated the transformation technique in person. Under her control, the black gunpowder part continues to shrink, eventually turning into a slender point that is difficult to distinguish with the naked eye. The square matchstick began to become smooth, round and shiny, and finally shrank quickly at the end, leaving an eye-shaped vertical hole for the thread to pass through. When you change back, you have to cast Untransfiguration. After confirming that Cedric has seen clearly, 
Professor McGonagall immediately transformed the needle back into a match. This is great. Cedric also loves transformation. The Battle of Hogwarts. The scene when Professor McGonagall brought the school statue to life and joined the battle had deeply shocked him at first. Quite a kind. It feels like Rowena Ravenclaw is reborn. A little further. When Harry took the Philosopher's Stone Trap in his first year, the giant chessboard array was the work of Professor McGonagall. Take a deep breath. Cedric calmed down his nervousness. Although he has a lot of knowledge and experience in his mind and has memorized the entire teaching book, this is his first time trying it, so he is inevitably a little nervous. Transfiguration. Fortunately everything went well. Following Cedric's voice and movements, the matches on the table were smoothly transformed into embroidery needles. Very, very good, kid. Professor McGonagall picked up the embroidery needle with a look of surprise on his face. Well, the hardness is moderate. It's not too soft or too hard. Even the pointed tip has a frighteningly sharp penetrating feeling. This is perfect. Professor McGonagall had never seen such an outstanding little wizard. She couldn't help but ask, is this your first time performing it? Yes, of course I have already memorized the spells and movements in the book. Cedric knew this was a good opportunity. So he added casually, actually, I feel like I have some talent for transformation. I occasionally feel that I can turn into a special animal. What? The experienced Professor McGonagall immediately sensed something was wrong. Although there is a prerequisite for endorsement. But Cedric had only gotten the wand not long ago, and this was his first time using it, which proved his talent for transformation. But being able to feel like you can turn into an animal is another concept. Could it be? Professor McGonagall immediately thought of a possibility. Oh my god, could you be? She quickly stood up and paced back and forth for a long time, going over all the things to note in her mind, and then returned to Cedric's side. Child, you should be a born animagus. She looked at Cedric with loving eyes. This is a very rare top-level ability. I will help you confirm it now. No matter what happens later, you must stay calm, okay? No problem. Cedric nodded quickly. He brought this up. The purpose of using Animagus for the first time was to have Professor McGonagall protect him. Very well, now you close your eyes and listen carefully to my words. Professor McGonagall comforted him softly. Can you imagine all the details of the animal you want to transform into? Okay. Cedric closed his eyes. The animal image soon appeared before his eyes. I can see its eyes, nose, eyebrows, hair, and claws clearly. Very good, then you start to circle around it and observe it from different angles. Normally, want to transform into an animal. It is not only necessary to understand the appearance, but also to understand the internal organs, even blood vessels and bones. But Cedric is already a born animagus after all. I've completed the spin. It's not just a circle. I can observe him 360 degrees, and it can also move under my control. Look, it's waving to me. Cedric had a great time with his eyes closed. Seeing that the time was right, Professor McGonagall called softly. Well, now you walk into its body from behind and try to control it. Take a deep breath. It's normal to feel weird and twisted. Soon, a fat man appeared in Professor McGonagall's office. What animal is this? Professor McGonagall raised his head, waved nervously at the beast in front of him, and asked with concern, Are you okay, kid? I feel great. Cedric spoke, but found himself letting out a low growl. He realized that he had changed. So he nodded instead and patted his chest with a huge animal paw to indicate that he was adapting well. You succeeded my boy. Professor McGonagall hugged one of Cedric's arms with great relief. After some looking around. She discovered that Ling Yun's animagus was as fat as a bear, plump and graceful, with a round head and short tail. But it's definitely not a bear. First of all, its hair is wrong. Its body color is black and white, its cheeks are round, and there are large, dark circles, surrounding its eyeballs. And the reminder is bigger than the average brown bear. At this moment, he was two meters tall when he was sitting on the ground. If he were to stand upright, he would be at least over two and a half meters tall. The body is also round and round, and you can tell by looking at it that it is not light. It was definitely a ferocious beast that she had never seen before. After measuring the opponent's arm, which was thicker than his own waist, 
Professor McGonagall asked in confusion, but do you know what kind of animal this is? Cedric nodded. He dipped his paw in ink and wrote a word on the ground. Panda. Professor McGonagall looked up and down at the behemoth in front of him. He clicked his tongue and said in wonder, I heard that this animal did exist in the ancient east, but is it so big? Indeed not. Cedric lowered his head and hugged his belly. My panda, which is nearly three meters tall, can be considered an enlarged and enhanced version. All limbs are as thick as an average person's waist. It took at least three people to hug him. When he stood up, he was already not far from the ceiling. This is Kung Fu Panda in Panda. Hoo hoo. Cedric made a few punches, which were surprisingly smooth. Underneath the thick fat, it is a very powerful muscle group, and it can easily make the wind sound with just a wave of your hand. Choking, rubbing his paws, the refreshing scratching sound also made him very satisfied with the hardness of his claws. It is indeed a national treasure. This combat effectiveness is still very powerful. The combat power should be very strong, but it is too conspicuous. Professor McGonagall circled around Ling Yun. After feeling the strength of this giant panda, he patted his arm and called. Very well, kid, can you try to get it to go back? Hmm. Cedric made a nasal sound. Then I started imagining my own body in my mind. Three seconds later, like a balloon deflating, Cedric felt the ceiling getting further and further away from his head, and then quickly returned to his human state. Consider this a success. He looked at himself magically. The feeling just now was really amazing, my strength had definitely doubled. You need to know that you are now loading Hagrid's template. Strength is four points. That's four times that of an ordinary adult male. Wouldn't it be eight o'clock to turn into a giant panda? Let's just say. Man, this animagus is very powerful in combat. Professor McGonagall checked it carefully again. After confirming that Cedric was not missing any arms or legs, she finally felt relieved. Very perfect. She clapped her hands to celebrate Cedric. You did a good job, but you still need to practice more. Without me around from now on, you can't do it at will until you master it completely. Clear. Let's continue learning to transform. Cedric urged excitedly. For the rest of the time, Professor McGonagall continues to teach Cedric the transfiguration charm. I don't know if the first year transfiguration class was too simple, or if Cedric's review was too comprehensive, or if he had learning experience from his previous life. Anyway, after an hour, it was only when Professor McGonagall finished teaching that he suddenly realized that he had finished teaching half of the elementary transfiguration guide. This was an experience she had never had before. She has taught hundreds of young wizards now, but she has never met a student like Cedric. Any question? Professor McGonagall only needs to say it once for the other person to understand. Even most of the time, it can be successful in actual combat. Raise the difficulty again and again. But they couldn't hinder Cedric at all. Cedric, you shocked me again. Professor McGonagall has lost count of how many times he has praised Cedric to his face. But facing such outstanding students, who can bear it? I just reviewed more solidly. Cedric said modestly. Boy, you are perfect. Professor McGonagall couldn't help but think. How wonderful it would be if the Cedric in front of him was the son of prophecy. It was the first time in my life that I met such a perfect student. I'll be proud of you. Ding, Professor McGonagall's first life wish has been fulfilled. Your Quidditch talent has been upgraded from a to S level. Completed so easily. Don't you need me to get straight A's in the wizard exam or something? Cedric gained so much tonight. He wanted to say it. Professor, in fact, the rewards you gave me also contributed a lot to my perfection. Now he is also a master at Quidditch. Okay, we've had enough excitement tonight. Professor McGonagall rubbed his temples. The emotional ups and downs took a lot of energy out of her, and she thought Cedric had learned too much in one night. It also takes time to digest. Let's stop here today. Okay Professor. Cedric sends Professor McGonagall away. She had a villa in Hogsmeade, and he now lived in the same place where Professor McGonagall lived when he was teaching. It is a room entered through a secret door in the wall of the study on the second floor. Satisfied, Cedric was still thinking as he fell asleep. Professor McGonagall needs to take it easy. The next person to be recruited should be Snape. Initial goals. 
Get the opponent's template card first. Hogwarts, Dungeons, Potions Classroom. Cedric threw dried nettles and ground snake teeth into the crucible and stewed them together. After taking the cauldron off the fire, he finally added the porcupine quills. Wait until a steady dark green color appears in the pot. Cedric took half a step back and said to Snape who was reading a book on the podium. Okay, professor. Snape came over with a bad look on his face. After confirming that there was nothing wrong with the potion, he reached out and took out the wand and emptied the potion inside. You've almost learned all the potions you need to learn in first grade. He said with a sigh of relief, it seems I can finally be quiet for a few days. No, professor, you know a lot, and I want to continue learning from you. Cedric certainly wouldn't miss the opportunity. The first grade is finished, and there are still six years to go. Moreover, there are many unique secret recipes and techniques of Snape. As the youngest potion master, Snape also has many treasured potions in his hands, which are the kind that are not seen on the market. Cedric couldn't afford it if he had to buy it himself. It would be best if I could practice using his potions. Although Snape put on a bad face. But in fact, he was actually very satisfied with the smart and studious Cedric. Then tell me, what other potions do you want to learn? It was obvious that Snape was actually reluctant to give up. Cedric clicked them all without hesitation, you can do it all. I want to learn everything you know, the potions in your studies, your own potions, spells, or other powerful ones. The main thing is that I am not afraid of too much and can learn everything. The main reason is that Snape has a lot of good things, such as Occlumency and the flying spell without any props. In the original work, only Voldemort and Snape were shown. Other spells such as the Shadowless Blade, the Upside Down Golden Bell, and Listening with Earplugs Closed are also very practical spells. Snape. Even Snape couldn't hold back when facing Cedric, who was smiling broadly and opening his mouth wide. I didn't notice it before. Snape turned around brilliantly and walked towards the podium. Humph, you are quite greedy. Hey hey. Cedric smoothed his hair and said calmly. What I want to do requires a lot of strength. I can't slack off for a moment. Snape paused. He already knew from Professor McGonagall the schedule that the other party had started when he was five years old. It just made Professor McGonagall sad. They all believed that Cedric's efforts were useless because he was the savior, or Voldemort's nemesis. It would only be Harry Potter. With such perseverance, you may find that you get nothing in the end. Is it worth it? Snape didn't look back. But the sound was a little erratic. This sentence seems to be asking Cedric, but also seems to be asking himself many years ago, and his future self. Where there's a will, there's a way. Cedric has been waiting for this moment. Sad, dedicated Professor Snape. You lived for 38 years, spent 9 years waiting for her, spent 29 years loving her, spent 22 years confessing that mudblood sentence spent four minutes hugging her cold body, and spent seven years protecting her son, it took me a second to look at those identical eyes again. Let me give you a little more motivation. When I set a goal, I don't know if I can reach it, but it doesn't stop me from enjoying the scenery on the journey. Live every day seriously. You are responsible for everything you do and every word you say, and you bear all the consequences. Take it seriously and have no regrets. This is a meaningful life. Cedric was still laughing heartlessly. Snape, who had his back turned to him, had closed his eyes. His childhood sweetheart was cut off by a mudblood. He did lose his true love, but it was his own fault. Because, he didn't even try to express his love to Lily. Arrogant Slytherins are good at missing their lovers. Take it seriously and have no regrets. After a while, Snape's gloomy voice came. You are becoming more and more like the little lion I hate most. Ding, you moved Snape successfully. You get bonus talent points plus one, Snape character template card. Duplicity, Professor Snape. Cedric, who knew Snape's true thoughts, boldly corrected him with a smile. Wrong, wrong. Professor, I have already told you that I want to enter Hufflepuff. Cedric's words interrupted Snape's recollection. He turned around and looked at Cedric with a slightly envious look. At such a young age, he knows what he really wants. This alone is already much better than him. Of course, it is impossible to have a good attitude on the surface. He snorted, Hufflepuff, like you said, this is your own decision. 
Apart from potions, do you really want to learn from me about other things? Of course. Cedric nodded without hesitation. Okay, I will prepare it, now you leave. Snape waved his hand. From now on, you can come to me and study for an hour at 8 o'clock every night. Thank you professor. Cedric was very happy to have reached his destination. He hummed, sunshine and rainbow, and the little white horse started to put away the teaching aids, then washed his hands at the monster-shaped gargoyle in the stone basin in the corner, and left the potions classroom happily. Snape remained silent the entire time. It had been a long time since such happy singing had sounded in his dark underground classroom. Cedric leaving, he immediately opened Snape's character template card outside the door. This is really. Looking at Snape's character template, Cedric felt a lot of emotion. Template card. Severus Snape. Talents. Potions, spells, this talent can be upgraded to S level, Occlumency, this talent can be upgraded to SS level, Super Master Wizard, Magic plus 5 points, Upper Limit 90 points. Life Wish List. The first item, find your own heir, please become an heir that satisfies him. By completing this wish list, you can upgrade your spell and potion talents to SS level. Item 2, Voldemort's death needs to be witnessed or confirmed. Completing this wish list will prevent this template card from occupying the slot of the template card. Item 3. The child is still alive and has the same eyes as Lily. Protect Harry before he dies. By completing this wish list, you can upgrade your occlumency, spells, and potion talents to SSS level. Okay okay. Starting point is double S, 1 SS. After completing the first character, you can get double SS. After completing the last item, it is directly 3 SSS. But no one else has this level of difficulty. Ah uh ah, -uh, I just don't have enough card slots. How should I get this legend? Cedric thought about it. Legend, legend, is it to create a new legend in the school? He secretly took note of this and decided to give the new students a big surprise after enrolling. However, the legendary value can only open two card slots at most. There are many other professors who are worth signing up for. First up is Sybil Trelawney, the seer of the Neuronife. The most commendable thing in her life is that she predicted Harry's savior. Dumbledore hired her to teach at Hogwarts. If she could predict it again in her life, it would be worth the price of admission. After I opened her card and gained the power of prophecy, I wonder if I can directly see the future like Grindelwald. The second side knife is Gilderoy Lockhart. This guy is Harry Potter's second year defense against the dark arts professor. Although he is a vase, he is surprisingly good at forgetting spells and can control others for a lifetime. It's a tough trick to learn. Other teachers are also not to be missed. Hufflepuff principal Pomona Sprout is a master of herbology, and her herbal talent must be ridiculously high. Phileas Flivy, the dean of Ravenclaw Academy, was the former dueling champion of the dueling club. Of course, the most important ones are Dumbledore and Harry. A template for these two. Cedric couldn't even imagine how wonderful it would be, but if he wanted to impress the latter, it would be fine. But the former is very troublesome. He hadn't mastered Occlumency yet, so he didn't even dare to hang out in front of him. There are many people who can be considered masters. Werewolf teacher Remus John Lupine, Centaur Firenze, Mad-Eye Alistair. Moody. Even the humble teacher, Cedric, did not ignore him. Ghost Cuthbert Binns, Professor of History of Magic, Mrs. Hooch, Professor of Flying Lessons. Although these two are average in strength. But maybe the tasks of template cards are also very ordinary. If you can complete the option of exempting the card slot, it will be somewhat beneficial. In order to kill Voldemort, no matter how small the gain is, it cannot be missed. Mosquito legs are also meat. The rest is the experience gained from the test, which can only be obtained by completing the schedule every day and completing the tests of different characters. The biggest gain so far is Snape's 1000 points. Cedric also frowned on the test between Hagrid Fung and Filch, but it was not something that could be completed in a short time. But Professor McGonagall is a little strange. She has completed her first wish list, why hasn't she completed the test? Is it because of that spell? in order to upgrade the magic power to 50 points as soon as possible. Cedric spent the next few days carefully studying the Patronus charm taught by Professor McGonagall. Although his magic power is already 47 points. However, this spell was extremely difficult. 
After three days, he could still only eject wisps of silver gas from the end of the wand. These gases coalesce into a clump, but they can never be gathered into the form of any living creature. It's okay kid, you've made rapid progress now, far beyond everyone I know. Saw Cedric fail again. Professor McGonagall found it very normal. Because the frustration for Cedric is that he didn't learn it the first time. It takes three days to learn how to call for protection. It's only a slight setback for Cedric. Cedric has no choice but to speed up now. Experience points can be used to upgrade enchantments. But it must be released completely by him first. So let's not say that he doesn't have experience points at the moment. Even if he does, he won't give priority to adding some practicable magic spells. It's okay, Professor, we can continue. Cedric was not discouraged. This little setback cannot bring him negative emotions. It's just that he doesn't understand. I have obviously dreamed of being happy, so why have I never been able to succeed? After three more failures, Cedric had to ask Professor McGonagall his question. Maybe, that's not what you're really happy about. This is the difference between having teaching experience. Professor McGonagall's words successfully prompted Cedric. An idea suddenly flashed through his mind. Correct. I have always imagined how happy I would be after defeating Voldemort. But in fact, killing Voldemort is not the source of my happiness, but the world without Voldemort. Me at that time, what will make you happy? A picture appeared in Cedric's eyes, the corners of his mouth curled up, and then he waved his wand. Call the gods to protect you. The silver strands quickly condensed into an animal form. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support my channel.